it's Ryan. So I'm not dressed for a video. I, you know, it's Thursday. It's cleaning day. I'm a mess. I just got out of the shower and I don't care because, you know, I've, I've had a lot on my mind today and this isn't even the topic. It's really not like there's been a lot of stuff going on with some people who have been ongoing screws in my side lately. And, um, it, it's just been a frustrating day. But as the night's gone on, I've been thinking not only about that, but about just so many other topics. And there's a video or, you know, I thought about writing it that I've wanted to do for a really long time. And I haven't been able to bring myself to do it, but I'm just kind of feeling it right now. So I decided while I'm motivated to do it, I'm going to do it. And it's, for, for me, it's, it's a pretty deep topic and it's not a fun one at all because there's a lot of hurt <laughs> in, in this topic and a lot of just like disbelief and disappointment in, in people and in life and in humanity when it comes to this. But, um, I have a feeling this might go a little long too, because I think once I start talking, I'm going to talk a lot. But like I said, it's something I've been wanting to express for a very long time. And I have done in short bits, but there's something about, you know, making a video and, and putting it out there for the world that for me is, is powerful and healing. So I'm going to do it. So, all right. I'm trying to think of where to begin. Um, So this is all going to cut in a, you know, the main point is it's kind of wrap up in a certain spot, but basically this, I want to talk about my ex in-laws with my first husband. Just as a little bit of background, um, you know, my, my first husband and I started dating when we were young, we were both teenagers and due to a series of circumstances, there came a point where I was essentially homeless. And at some point they kind of caught on to my situation and they let me live with them. And, you know, I really became a part of their family. And it, it, it was more than that. Um, in particular, his mom, um, you know, I, I'd agree. I have a good mom. I'm not saying not, but my mom was a very different person. She was a, you know, stay at home and cook and clean and do for your kids and your husband kind of person. And that was what I grew up seeing. And there really weren't any like women in my family who were independent and motivated and highly educated and who weren't ashamed of doing what they wanted to do with their lives and not just, you know, all that matters is being a mom. Um, so, and I didn't fit, <laughs> you know, that I just want to be a stay at home mom mold. I wanted kids and I, I love that part of it, but that wasn't me. And this was like the first time I got to see someone up close and personal who was, I want to start because she was, she was like what, you know, I saw her. I'm like, like, she's a great mom. She is this fun mom and she's, she loves her kids so much and she lives for her kids, but she also lived for herself and she had a string of degrees and she, you know, I remember telling me like a story about, you know, a professor who was like, you're never going to get a master's degree for housework or doctorate for housework or something like that. But, you know, she was the person who like helped me see that you can balance all of those things in a way that you're there for your family and you're there for yourself and you can pursue your education as much as you want and your career and you know all these things and that when you do all these other things it also makes you better <laughs> at the mom part because you're such a good role model for your kids and especially your daughters and well anyway I could go on and on but she, you know, the point being, she was someone who I really 
respected and admired. And I think I've showed you in a different video, certain topics, I'm insta tears and I can't help it. It's like, even if I'm not feeling it here, it's like this underneath the water trauma like betrays me with my eyes. So if I get tears, I seriously can't help it and I hate it, but whatever. I'm just going to explain that. So I really love their family. You know, his dad was great and he had two, two younger sisters who, you know, I'd watched you grow up, you know, cause he was like four years older than the next sister. And so by the time, you know, we were just teenagers and we started dating. So by the time I was there, she was, they were all still kids and I watched them grow up and, you know, we ended up having good relationships as well uh, when they would come visit and spend time. And, and when my daughter was born, they were, you know, just great grandparents and, and aunts and, every, you know, they really loved her. And even though they lived a bit away, they always came to see her. And again, I, I do want to say like, especially his mom, like she was just so like, you could just see the love for her granddaughter and, and it was awesome. Um, and I was so grateful for to have those relationships, in her, uh, my daughter to have those relationships in her life. Um, I guess I gotta edit this now, <laughs> bleep out the name. So anyway, I, then everything happened. Um, if you've watched my previous videos, which I suggest that you do, because I don't want to go into everything right now, but my first husband sexually abused our daughter and, and did horrible things. And when it happened, you know, first things first, I took care of getting my daughter safe and, you know, you know, the, the calling the police and, and all these other pieces. And one of the things that was so on my mind afterwards was like, Oh my God, what, you know, how are they going to take this? Um, this is going to kill, this is going to, you know, destroy him. This is going to be horrible. You know, I used to always joke with my first husband that he was the golden child <laughs> in their family. You know, he was the firstborn and he was the only child for like four years before the other two came along and, you know, just this, this perfect, beautiful son. And I was like, Oh my God, this is just gonna kill him and I, I knew you know I don't really mean literally but I was trying you know put myself in those shoes I was like my god how are they gonna take this and and I, you know that bothered me a lot and you know the other piece that I kept thinking of was I don't I don't want Lee to lose those relationships that she had I said her name again damn it bleep um and my daughter <laughs> I didn't want my daughter to lose those relationships either so one of the things they did within the first few weeks, um, they, they didn't reach out to me after everything happened at first. They didn't connect with me at all after they got the basics from my ex, what happened. And I don't even know how much they knew or whatever at the time, but I wrote them a letter. I believe I sent it to them electronically and I also sent them a letter and I sent it to his sisters and I also sent it to his aunt who her and her husband and her kids, we had a really good relationship too. And they were like family to me. And I sent them this letter and, you know, explained, I can't believe this is happening either. And I, I know this is crazy <laughs> because it's crazy to me too, but that I don't, I don't want to lose more, you know, even more people than she already is going to. I mean, she's basically losing her father right now. Uh, and there was no response. There was no response at all. And they never said a word. And then when we went to our first divorce hearing, sh they showed up and asked for visitation. And I didn't have to give it to them, but I didn't even really fight it. I said, you know, as long as you agree to these ground rules, you know, not being around him and not talking about the case and different things like that. I, don't, I didn't want her to lose these people in her life who I, I knew had loved her and who she loved. 
and I, um, I said, sure, you can have visitation as long as you follow these rules. And, you know, went on to, you know, and on the first visit before I would let Allie go out, damn it, I saw her name again. Ah. And my daughter went out. <laughs> I, um, went out to the car and tried to talk to my mother-in-law to try to explain the situation. And so that she understood that I, I had a hard time accepting all of this too. And she just blew me off. She didn't want to hear. She didn't care. It's like she, she just closed off her mind to the possibility and she didn't even want to hear facts or anything because she refused to even entertain the idea of it being true. And that was hard. But I did let them see her. And, you know, with a few small exceptions, the rules were mostly followed. You know, there was a little blip with it um, a couple years, maybe a year or so after, whatever. But, you know, we worked that out, sort of. <laughs> um, so it was never easy. Um, and it was hard every time I let her go see her, even though I chose to let her go see her, I didn't fight, you know, I wanted it for her. And there was even a time when she came home and my daughter was like, she said something to me about, I see it on your face that you're not happy that I'm with them or something like that. And this was pretty early on in the visitation. I was like, I got to change the way I act. You know, I thought I was doing a good job of keeping a smiling face, but she's very intuitive and she knows me very well and you know she saw it and so from that point on I was like I need to try to make my heart match my logical you know support for this and and it was better after that and I noticed with my daughter that she it, you know, never acted guilty for seeing them after that or tried to check on me and, and different things. So I was glad she expressed that to me because it helped me to change the way that I was acting without even knowing it. <laughs> like, I guess I, you know, I'm not a very good liar. So I betray, my face betrays me very easily. So anyways, um, then during this time, um, even, I can't remember if this was before or after, but, so we'll just go through the whole story. So the trial process went on for almost eight years and he was finally convicted once and for all and taken into custody and sentenced to 45 years. And they never came to trial. They never talked about anything. And the day that my daughter was to testify in court, they showed up. And it felt like it, like they were there to stare her down and intimidate her in some way. And she did what she needed to do. And she told the truth. And, you know, the trial, justice was served in the trial. And he was found guilty, like I said. And they didn't even come after that. They didn't come to the, you know, other stuff. Or not all of them, at least. And, oh, it, it made me angry. And... Afterwards, she had said that when she got to give a statement later, she wanted to say something to her grandparents. And I didn't know what it was. And um, I said that was fine. And I had said something to them about, you know, maybe we should cool off on the visit for a time or two. Because she said she wants to say something to you. No response. Mind you, they've been having a relationship for eight years at this point. You know, seeing them, um, you know, usually twice a month um, and in between and, and talking and stuff like that. And they completely cut her off that day after the trial. They never talked to her again. They never gave an explanation. The day he was found guilty and taken into custody, they never talked to her again. And it broke her heart. Oh, and my daughter being my daughter when she got to give her a victim impact statement at the sentencing she said she wasn't going to and then at the last minute she said she wanted to talk and she went up there and she didn't talk 
about her father and she talked about her grandparents and she didn't say anything mean about them she said that she knew how hard this was on them and that she understood why they were going through such a hard time god she's just such a good person and she you know and it just broke my heart that she used that platform for that because that was so hurting her and you know on her mind sorry but anyway that's the story with my in-laws and I, I can never understand why people do these things like why how you could do something like that how can you ignore what was done to your granddaughter how can you ignore all these things and so the weird connection to this is this stupid O.J. Simpson thing I was watching. I think it's the Ryan Murphy show, um, American Crime Story, where they did the o People vs. O.J. Simpson. And I was watching that. And I'm watching this episode and all of his family, all of his friends, you know, Rob Kardashian. And it was like, no matter how much evidence was presented... No matter how much was brought to light, they wouldn't even consider that he had done it. They wouldn't even think about it. It was like, and it was like this aha moment for me. Eventually, I guess Rob Kardashian kind of came around. But anyway, it was like this aha moment. And I was like, this is just, this is human nature. When, when you love somebody that much a child or you know in some cases a husband or, or different things like that and you love and respect them and they've treated you well it's almost impossible to believe that they would do something so terrible no matter how much evidence and is there and and no matter what and like I, I was watching this and I was like oh my god this is and I started to look at other cases and I was like this happens all the time and it's like it's this defense mechanism and it's not me saying that it's okay but it's me saying that this is a first level defense mechanism and they just got stuck in it and they refuse to see because it's too hard to see and you know because I'm a person who doesn't like first level defense mechanisms you know when I catch myself doing something like that I'm like whoa I you know I gotta fix this I need to do the right thing I I need to think big picture and step back from the situation and look at things from an outside perspective because that's just who I am and that's who I've always been but they never did and it cost it cost them their grandchild and niece and um I guess you cousins <laughs> I don't know but nephew you know niece and cousins from the other side of the family and I just wish they would open their minds and see the truth and accept the truth or at least entertain the truth but they've just closed their minds to even considering the truth of what happened and it hurts and I, sometimes I feel like it's stupid like oh, it's just my in-laws it's like it's my mom it's not... but it did it hurt and it hurt even more to see my daughter lose them after by their own doing by their own choice after me going through so much quiet internal pain to foster that relationship with them even though it was so hard for me and it, it so the stupid OJ Simpson show <laughs> helped me at least come to some kind of peace with it and to try to not take it so personally and personally against myself and personally against my daughter and it kind of helped with being healing, you know, I, I, I hope it, I wish it didn't happen. And I wish they would have been the kind of people who would have done the right thing from the beginning and looked at the facts of the situation, but they didn't. 
and at this point that's okay I know they've gone through a great amount of pain and trauma themselves you know on behalf of what what their son did and their brother did and their nephew did whether they admit it or not and you know something that makes me really angry is he ended up remarrying and got his you know they got pregnant and his wife was pregnant when he was sentenced and um taken to jail so he has this daughter who's never gonna know her father and i get so angry when i think about all of them who knew all of this and they didn't try to stop it they didn't say don't do this to another woman don't do this to another child you know even knowing that there was a good chance you were going to jail don't you know don't do this and and they didn't and fuck that bothers me and I could go on a whole nother 20 minutes here talking about how I feel sadness for his wife and child I don't know if they're still married but um because he's been in jail for two years almost but it's hard and it sucks and I have pretty much got over it sorry I'm like blubbery but anyway thanks OJ Simpson's family and friends and people who made the people versus OJ Simpson show for helping me to get some clarity and on human nature and some closure <laughs> and I know they'll I never see this I, I would imagine <laughs> but part of me wishes they would so that they could see the impact that that had and maybe someday open their eyes because uh, I know my daughter and I know if someone did the right thing she would open her heart to them again and I wish that that would happen but at this point you know it's been so long that I've pretty much you know said whatever because it's 100% on them at this point you know she's not gonna reach out I'm not gonna reach out um so that is the story and a life lesson of mine and a healing story and it feels really good to have gotten it down and I'm sorry this is so ridiculously long we're going on like 23 minutes right now it's really unexpected and sorry I'm a blubbery mess no I'm not sorry I'm not sorry I had to do this and I'm glad I did and it's gonna feel really good to post it online so if you manage to listen to this whole video <laughs> thanks um, yeah I guess that's it bye